a number of you are doing glass in your still life uh, so this is the little way to help you get set up quickly um, I've got a scene here with two planes two lights and a glass <clears throat> I've already UV'd the glass let me see what this renders So we'll put a shader on it. Shift T. Standard surface. Let's just stop this render for a second. Standard surface. Um, definitely, when you're doing this, use the preset for glass. That's just the place to start. It's going to disappear. It'll still be in your scene, but it's transparent. Uh, typically, it renders OK. One thing you're going to need to do, um, and this is in the shape node. So I've got the glass object and the glass shape. Um, anytime you have transparency in your objects, you need to turn off this opaque switch. Otherwise, it's really not going to work correctly. So anytime you have transparency, like we do in this class, you need to turn this off on every object. So you'll see if I do a render now, it looks a little better. <clears throat> and this is the first thing to get set up. Let me turn this off. So I wanted to try pulling this into Painter, working with it in Painter, and getting some maps back. So it doesn't look like the space glass here. So I have this pulled up in Painter. I haven't done anything but make a, a bring in the glass and make a PBR metal rough like we've done on everything else. So once I pull it in, I can bake the maps like we do. I don't know that it'll make too big a difference on this one. That 1024 is fine for now. Since we want to work with the opacity of it, we need to add another, another channel here. And the way to do that is here. I'm going to add opacity. So now if I look at my layers, look at the properties here, I've got an opacity channel. So I'm going to get rid of this default one and just make a fill so right now the shader that's on this in painter doesn't support opacity so we need to change that and that's here so right now we've got the shader that does PBR metal rough and if I click that I'm looking for this half transparent one here PBR metal rough with alpha and then it disappears and the defaults are fine so now if I change this opacity on this fill layer you can see my glass come back and it doesn't really look that great in this window this is just kind of how it's going to be so we're going to do a little back and forth here I found that turning this mostly down and then turning metal all the way up Turn roughness down for glass. And it's not too bad. So I'll call this just basic transparency. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to go through this kind of quick, is add a fill layer on top of this. And for this, I'm going to get rid of everything except roughness. So I can set the roughness. So I'll just put it in the middle, somewhere like that. And what I'm going to do here is 
right click on my layer and add a black mask. So black mask means there's nothing affecting this layer, so it's back to the shiny stuff again. If I right click on the mask, I'm going to start adding filled masks. So here it is, there's my fill. And just for now, I'm going to grab some of these grunges and just drop them in. So I can see it there. I can maybe up the contrast a little bit. And that looks great. Kind of a cool thing to do is I'm going to right click on this mask again and add another fill. So now I've got a couple of fills. I can find some other And just like you do in Photoshop, you can control how these two grunges uh, layer. <clears throat> so if I just put it to multiply, and I'm just going to arrow my way down through these. Oh, and it doesn't do it here. Okay. So that's kind of cool. And so this right here, this will be my roughness layer. I can add more things on top of this mask, but that's good enough for now. I'm going to add another layer here. And on this one, I'll turn off everything except height. <clears throat> I'll add a black mask here. So the same technique, add a fill layer in here. And I'm going to find one of the blurrier grunge maps. So nothing happens yet. I masked it, but my layer itself, I need to increase this to see it. That doesn't really look that good to me. Well, let's just try another one. Some scratches. Actually, that's kind of nice. So what I might do here, so I've got the scratches here and that's kind of nice, but a little kind of busy and noisy looking. I'll right click on this mask again and I'm going to add a filter. And a filter is a way you can sharpen, soften and blur and whatnot. And I'll just put a blur on that mask. Something like that, just as a place to start. And let's add one more layer on top, and this time I'm going to paint. So I feel like these three are just getting my basic glass, so it isn't space glass. <clears throat> I'm going to add a layer on top, and this one I'm going to be going to paint some stains. I'm going to do this quickly here. So I'm going to paint opacity. That's This is transparent. So I'm going to paint maybe 50% transparency. Roughness that's a little higher. Some kind of color. Maybe I'll get a little bit of blue, maybe. It's not very much. And I don't know. I think I'll leave the height alone for now. Let's just see if I paint a few strokes, what happens. Okay, I'm going to undo. 
Maybe I'll go under brushes and get something. So my glass has an inside and outside, so I have to make sure I paint on both if I want it to look like someone drank some stuff out of this. It's a little hard to see, isn't it? Try a few different brushes here to get a little mix of things. And I'm going to paint on the inside, I think, too. Okay, I think I'll take it from there. So I'm going to look at my channels. I'm hitting C on the keyboard, base color. I should see a teeny bit of blue, like against the white of the glass. Height, that's the blurred height map. Roughness, metallic, interesting. normal opacity normal height and mesh okay back to material so let's output maps here so to get this opacity channel which we want we have to take a couple of extra steps <clears throat> we've always used this config in class this PBR metal rough they've got a bunch of pre preset configurations here but we're gonna have to make our own so the configurations are here and there's this Arnold 5 standard um, what I'm gonna do is just right click and duplicate this and it puts it down here I'll rename it Arnold 5 with opacity so you can see the channels you always typically get. What I'm going to do is duplicate the base color here. So in Arnold 5 with opacity, I'm going to drag and drop the opacity channel onto this and say gray channel. And lastly, give it a name. And so Arnold 5 with opacity, if I go back to exports now, I can say to put it at the bottom, yeah, okay. Arnold 5 with opacity. And I'll put this someplace helpful. Let's export. Okay, looks okay. So back to here. Let's turn that off. So the connection for this is a little more involved than stuff we've done in the past. So base color, roughness, 
normal and opacity. So I know we had a metal ma metalness map that came out. <clears throat> We're not going to use the metalness for the Arnold version of the shader. So that that's something we actually don't need. The only reason to turn it on in Painter was so that you could see the reflections a little better. So let's try this out. Um, just like everything we've done so far, we need to change these to raw. And base color, we can leave alone. And probably the easiest thing to do is connect up roughness. This goes to the specular roughness. So instead of just doing a direct connection here from the roughness, I'm going to put a node in the middle so I can adjust everything. And this is going to be, I typically use the remap HSV, but there's a number of nodes you can use to do the same thing. And I'm just going to slip this in between my roughness connections. And really the only thing I'm interested in is the value, which is the black and white of it. And if I want this to be more shiny feeling, I can make more of it zero or black. And it's a pretty easy adjustment here. If I make this a little bigger. And you can kind of see, I can really kind of real-time make these adjustments. Might be a little sharp. <clears throat> and I can connect the normal map up. So I'll tab normal map And you can see what that's doing. So we need to use the base color and get some of that milky coloring in because it's still all clear glass, even if it's a little smudgy now with the roughness. And so here's where the connections are a little bit different. If I map this directly to base color, nothing really changes because the base color, the weight is at zero. And so that means the whole base color section here has no effect on it. I'm going to go down to the transmission here and open this up. This is what makes it transparent. If I pull this down just a little bit for now, then I can see the base color. Wait, base color things get ungrayed out and I can turn this all the way back up. <clears throat> And that kind of gives me this milkiness all the way through that I don't really want everywhere. And the places where I do want it, I've got it defined by the opacity. So I'm going to use this as a mask for the weight of the base channel and the weight of the transmission. So what I'm going to do is reverse one of these. So let me slide it over for a moment. So I'm going to put a remap HSV in there. Why don't I st stop the rendering? Because I always want to tweak stuff once I get it here. And I'm going to put a reverse node here. Basically this will change black to white and white to black. So these are the connections. Let me move my normal map out of the way. My color and roughness maps out of the way. 
So it's just this opacity. So what I'm going to do is use any one of the colors. It doesn't really matter. The red color as the weight for the base color. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the inverse of this as the transmission weight. So basically I'm sending one part of this mask up to control the base color and the inverse of that to control the transmission. The base color is the milky residue we're going to put in there. The transmission is the clear glass. So the reason I put this here, this remap HSV, I think you can see here, I'm going to tweak the value a little bit. And basically the darker this is, the more of it's black or at the bottom, the clearer it is. And the more and the higher it is, the more we see the residue and the stuff we painted in Painter. So that's really too strong. I'm going to spin my glass around a little bit again. Let's put it back to zero. So the reason I put these remaps in is because now I can really tweak this with my own lighting because I don't have any HDRs. I'm using just a couple of Arnold lights and I can really determine where that, how strong that middle should be. And then I can adjust, do the same with the roughness. So if I make this a little higher, it just makes those spots a little rougher. So I like the roughness. I'm not, I think this is just a little too solid. And this makes it easy to tweak it out in Arnold under the final lighting that you're going to do. So let's give it a second to render. Okay, so not bad. I really feel like the, um, <clears throat> the clear stuff is too clear and the opaque stuff is too opaque. So I'll look at the roughness again, and where this is flat, that's all just super clear. So why don't I just like, I can just make none of it super clear. feels a little better I can also say on my opacity ramp here that I don't want any of it to be down to zero like I want a little bit of milky color all the way around so you can see what happens if I lift this up I just want a little bit Okay, and there we go, doing some dirty glass. Thanks.